This documentary is brought to you by the John Ejekum Kufour Foundation to tell the story of the extraordinary turnaround the rice sector in Ghana has seen over the last few years following the intervention of a foundation and its partners. Rice, one of the world's most widely consumed staples and a substantial part of the diet of Ghanaians. It is not just a food source for millions of people, it is a major contributor to Ghana's agricultural economy. Millions of farmers across the country from the north to the south, east to the west, engage in its production for their livelihoods. My name is Richard Agbejega Kwame Ahimbre. My company name is Richard Millicenter. I'm into local rice processing, such as uh, and varieties like Agra, Esbaika, Togomashia, uh, Amankotia. Formerly we were doing okro and those uh, miss. But when this rice come to this area, I think it's past all the crops that we have been doing. Some of uh, uh, people in this time, they said they haven't got 100 Ghana cities before. But because of this rice production, they are now okay. So there is a, a, a profit and our benefit in the rice farming. And there is a, a benefit in it. If you have seen, this my building, I, 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 I I said it's here because of rice for me. My, my children's school fees, I used to pay all those things. And I used to cater for their home. And the rice value chain spanning production, processing, Storage and distribution employs thousands more in markets, silos, and factories. My name is John Mensa Ganyagulu. I am the production manager for Strong Men Foods and Farm in Akusi. Uh, here we do a production of uh, rice and then we take it through uh, processes from drying and then down to bagging and uh, bagging of the paddy and then we mill. So the processes that takes place outside is the drying and then the milling itself takes place inside. For a very long time, the rice sector was in the hands of foreigners. But through hard work and perseverance, today Ghanaian producers like Richard Ahingle of Ahingle Mills are dominating the market now. He runs a cottage level rice mill at Akrofo in the whole municipality, which is creating jobs and a vibrant local economy for residents. Agra Rice, Amakwetia, and Yasmin 80 are some of the Ghanaian varieties he grows, and the people love them. When we started doing the farming, before we can uh, do the milling, we have to go to Hohwe. We travel the party from here to Hohwe, which is very, very far away, because there we have the machine. So we, we have to go there and then do the milling there and then bring it back here. For me, I used to, if I bring it here, I have to, uh, we know why it then send it to Ho. So I, I find that there is uh, difficulties in it. So I just come in to buy this machine to make the uh, the people here also feel comfortable. The lands are not developed, so we, we do it ourselves. 
You see, we don't have machines. All, only one power tiller we have in this committee. So we find it difficult to, 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 to do a, a planting. The main intervention here is, is to address the quality issues. Um, so the quality issues basically, um, we will look at the rice that, um, that, uh, that is going to be traded to us and we ask ourselves that uh, do they actually meet the industry uh, standards and expectations. So um, all rice that comes to us um, from the farmers would have to go through uh, testing and uh, testing grading and certification and, and rebagging um, according to the standards, the industry standards. Now that rice has been, is listed on the Ghana Stock Exchange, that means that, I mean, it, it's now standardized, it's now structured. You cannot just sell any type of grain as rice. It has to go through certain, poly, uh, certain quality, you know, acceptance before your know, people can uptake. So one, one of the things we really would want to see is that how do we build the capacity of the farmers to be able to understand the standards requirement for rice? But the turnaround for the Ghana rice industry did not just happen. It has taken a considerable amount of both government and private sector investment to reach this far, including the commitment of government's Planting for Food and Jobs program since early 2017 to increase local rice production by 30% within three years and ensure the nation reaches 100% self-sufficiency by 2025. Through the various initiatives, we are giving out inputs in terms of improved seeds and fertilizers. In addition to that, we are also providing warehouses. In, in addition to the warehouses that we are also making sure, you are engaging partners to go into the marketing of that as a ministry. We are also looking at land development. Land development is one of the challenges in the rice industry. You need machineries to be able to develop the land. And the ministry as a whole is bringing a lot of machinery to support land development. International partners have followed suit with record-breaking support for the Ghana rice sector by investing in initiatives like the Public-Private Partnership for Competitive and Inclusive Rice Value Chain Development. Planting for Food and Jobs, Rice Chapter. Commissioned by the Alliance for Green Revolution Africa, AGRA, and funded by the German government, the project is supporting more than 128,000 smallholder rice farmers across the country to increase productivity. It is also working to strengthen the rice value chain. Productivity has been low in Ghana's rice sector over the years, with yields averaging about 2.5 metric tons per hectare, compared to 7 tons per hectare in other parts of Africa. Through the work of a partners over the last one year, better technologies have been introduced to more than 68,000 rice farmers. More than 1,200 metric tons of certified improved rice seeds have been produced and distributed to farmers under the initiative through Volta City Farms and Sparks Farms. Billy Anyomi Agboche of Volta City Farms explains Ghanaian rice variety including Exbaka, Kentinka, Enapa, Emopa and Date have extraordinary traits that are transforming the lives of farmers. Every agricultural venture must start with seed. Seed is not just anything you put in the ground that comes up, but seed is something that is produced in a specific way so that it has the potential to give a higher yield. Under the project, more than 200 agro-dealers have been trained to better support farmers. The capacity of more than 46 rice millers has been built. About 256 village-based advisors have been trained to support farmers and several financial products have been developed for them.
Ebo Graham, who is operations officer at Helpline Institute, says more farmers will benefit from the training as well as extension services soon. We started work about 12 months ago and the improvement is tremendous. With Intervalley as the lead with its implementing strategy of to facilitate access to early generation seeds and all those ones, government is supporting, we are doing that. Technical assistance to MOFA, we are doing that. And also, MOFA also supporting the mobilization and also registration of the farmers on that front is also ongoing, letting them have access to seed, letting them have access to fertilizer and other agrochemical inputs that are all under the subsidy is ongoing. Marketing remains another essential part of the rice value chain. Ebo Graham says work is ongoing to strengthen and expand access to output markets for farmers through the development of infrastructure and value chain financing. Currently there is good market for local, uh, Ghana rice. I wouldn't say local rice, please we don't say local rice anymore, it's Ghana rice. So there is market for Ghana rice. Hundred thousands of dollars have been invested in leveraging infrastructure and irrigation schemes for the benefit of farmers. And efforts are ongoing to help farmers get access to storage facilities and silos to preserve bumper harvests. Injak Kane of Interval says Ghanaians are taking charge of the rice industry. Surprisingly, Africa has excellent yields. West Africa has excellent yields. Ghana has good yields. In Jack Kane wants women to also take advantage of these vast opportunities. Uh, most of the members in the company are women. But this said, coming into the, the farming space, indeed, uh, there, there's no way this leapfrog will happen without having a clear role and responsibility for women in this space. Under the project, the Ministry of Food and Agriculture is also working to mobilize and crowd in both public and private resources for the benefit of the farmers. Head of the Crop Directorate Services, Seth Akuto, says the efforts are translating into the provision of inputs for farmers. The Ministry is providing improved seeds at a subsidized price. Similar fertilizer is also being given out to farmers, the youth, and all those who are interested to go into farming. George Quay, who is an agricultural extension officer, testifies Ghana has probably the best quality rice seed you'll find anywhere in the world. Now our local rice can match even the foreign rice. Not uh, even the foreign, all rice all over the world. The John Ajekum Kufo Foundation is also working to improve governance systems and help strengthen associations in the rice sector for effective advocacy. Currently, we work very closely with the GRIP, Ghana Interprofessional Rice uh, Body. In fact, uh, four years ago, that body was almost dormant, but we were able to raise some funds to get it revived, and currently it's becoming one of the most vibrant uh, organizations uh, promoting rice production in the country. So we're going to continue to work with them. Also, we're in discussions with the, some external parties that are very interested in partnering us uh, to support rice production. I'm very you know, passionate about the rice uh, uh, projects. Uh, one, because uh, smallholder farmers are involved. And for us, we are in the business of supporting smallholder farmers, really to be able to increase their incomes and productivity. And so whatever gives the smallholder you know, farmers joy actually brings joy back to us. President of the Ghana Rice Interprofessional Body, GRIB, Nana AJ Aye, is excited about the collaborations. He says GRIB's governance structures have been strengthened with executive elections happening across the country. He wants more youth to join them. As I speak with you, I'm not just the president of GRIB. I'm also a farmer. I'm a rice farmer from the central region. 
I remember um, when I started farming and also owned a small mill in the central region. I milled my rice and I don't, marketers don't come there to buy. These days, as soon as I milled my rice, I see people out there buying. Nana AJ Aye, who is also a rice farmer, says Ghana rice brands are the best. The Ghana rice industry is performing very well. If you go back 10 years ago, from 10 years ago up to today, if you look at what has happened in the industry, um, um, we've done very well, although there's a lot of challenges that we must address. But looking at the overall performance of the rice industry, I think we've done very well. Ordinary farmers are excited about all the above support. The Mufa directors, they brought a seat to us and they themselves came and do the uh, nursery but they, do, they couldn't find anyone who would lead the farmers. So when I came home, I just mobilized some people so we will do the starting of the rice farming at this Akrafu Fairview Fair. Now, a lot more high quality, well packaged Ghana rice brands approved by the Food and Drugs Authority as well as the Ghana Standards Authority are on the market, which are better than imported ones. Whether it is brown rice, parboiled rice, or any other kind, you can get very good quality here in Ghana. As Samuel Isiyama Yeboa, who is manager at Strongman Food Processing Company, explains, they are using modding machines to process and package the rice. See, this is the quality rice that we produce, Mr. Rabbit, and it actually goes through a rigorous process from the paddy to the final stage where we bag it into these packages. We have the customer at heart, so quality is our, our, our main focus as we do the mailing. And this product is the best in Africa. This is MMB seed. They are part of the uh, subsidy that government is giving to farmers. They are seed pro uh, producers. So this is the agra seed. This is what has come from the parboiling from the north okay. and having the lowland. This is where they, they are. This is where we are moving them into this before and after. These are the transformation that we, we are getting into. So when you see these runs, you get them as the where we pick them from. And where we are moving is where you have this one. This is also the same as, this is parboiled. This is parboiled. This, so this is where the packaging changes to. From here, it comes to this one. So eventually, um, this kind of packaging is phased out. And it comes to this one. So it moves into this kind of. Ordinary rice consumers are happy with Ghana rice brands. The main reason I used to eat local rice is most people used to say it's really good and it's nice. It tastes good. Where your water more? Where is your water? Where your northern region? Where is your free north? They say the emono, echo, echo fine. They say the BBI crying. What is clear now is that the Ghana rice sector is open for business. What we have today is an extremely supportive policy environment for rice farmers, processors and traders. There is increased efficiency of rice sourcing, processing and marketing. This has improved access to financial resources for the rice value chain actors. There is improved access to financial resources for rice value chain actors. Recently, the Ghana Commodity Exchange signed an agreement with sector stakeholders to help further promote Ghana rice. Chief Executive Officer of the exchange, Dr. Kadri Alpha, says the rice sector is a major priority for them. In terms of uh, some interventions, that this is an commodity exchange. Um, we are looking at. Um, I mean, uh, there is an exchange that um, initially we focus on. On the, on, the, on the Ghanaian market 
and then we're thinking about scaling up into West Africa um, and um, into Africa as a whole and probably also outside Africa. So the kind of the commodities that that we trade or we list on the exchange here, you know, and the rice is one of them, these are the commodities that we would also want to extend outside. New Patriotic Party MP and Vice Chairman of Parliament's Agriculture Committee, Abraham Juma Odum, comments the successes chalked thus far. He says government is working to provide rice farmers more resources, including financial support. The program is looking at raising the yield, which has been very low from 1.5 metric tons to about 6 metric tons per hectare. And besides raising it from 1.5 to 6 metric tons, farmers are going to do a minimum of two croppings in a year. So in, in other words, the farmer who was initially getting 1.5 metric tons value of rice is now going to get about 12 metric tons value of rice in a year. NDC MP for Kintampo North and member of the Agriculture Committee, Kwesi Etu Bonde, is also encouraging the public to consume more Ghana rice. He says it is a major job opportunity for the youth. The rice market in Ghana, the one we import, 2018, just last year, when the Minister of Finance came to the house, said it's 1.2 billion United States dollars. That alone is a market. When you look at the rice sector, you will see that there are a number of inefficiencies and gaps, you know, uh, that accounts for um, the large import that we have or we have been witnessing in terms of rice in, in the country. And for me, I think it is uh, unacceptable and um, it is actually a disincentive, you know, both to the government and the key stakeholders in the rice value chain. We have got our rice. 17 cities. Now, there is a clarion call on government to ban importation of rice so Ghanaian producers can fill the space. Many Ghanaians don't believe that Ghana produced rice is not just as equal to but better in many respects, more nutritious than the rice that is imported. For me, what is really unacceptable is to have a country with the right land, right climate, right vegetation, everything to produce rice, and yet sit by to expend a billion dollars of our money every year to import rice to make other countries rich. Right. For me, I think uh, two things we want to see at the end of the project. One, that the farmer now understands that um, if he is looking for seeds, he knows where, where to get the seeds. He can, he can actually differentiate between what is a seed and what is a grain. Events like the Ghana Rice Festival have been introduced by rice sector partners to create awareness about Ghana rice brands and push for better policies in the sector. Every year for the past, I think, four years, we've been helping with the rice festival. We're going to have another rice festival, which is going to be the best so far because we are mobilizing ordinary rice uh, sellers to come and demonstrate the varieties that we have and cook some for the public. One of the objectives of organizing the rice fest uh, festival is to sensitize the public about the efforts being put up by stakeholders and government to increase local production. Now you know, the Ghanaian rice sector is on the rise and the quality is greater. Anytime you want to buy rice for your home, go for Ghana rice. Schools, buy Ghana rice. Churches, buy Ghana rice. This will save Ghana some 600 million US dollars spent importing rice annually. In those days, we're talking about the quality is not good. Then secondly, you are also talking about stones. But now, I can assure all the stakeholders that the quality of rice that we are promoting as a country is good. 
this is just the beginning of an extraordinary turnaround for the Ghana rice sector. The future will be even greater. Ghana rice, the best of all.